good morning. Welcome. It's good to see everybody this morning. Special welcome to those who are visiting with us. Welcome to those who are worshiping with us online. We call your attention to several of the bullet, uh, several of the bulletins you'll find in the announcement. Several of the announcements you'll find in the bulletin this morning. A uh, reminder that we continue to collect food this week and next for the food pantry. We collect all year long, but it's a concerted effort for this month. Um, you can bring that to the office or leave it on the, on the pew in the narthex uh, when you come for worship. That is perfectly fine. Myrna Connolly is celebrating her 95th birthday. There's uh, information in the bulletin if you'd like to drop her a card. The community Thanksgiving dinner will be held at 1230 this year at St. Joseph's Catholic Church. A uh, reminder that next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, and we will have one worship service. That will be at 9 o'clock here in the sanctuary, uh, during which we'll have the hanging of the greens. We'll be decorating the sanctuary in the midst of the worship service, and following the service, we'll have a breakfast potluck in the fellowship hall. And I've got a clipboard to pass around for that. And also another clipboard, uh, because it's time for college care packages, and we need folks to help with that. So... That being said, let us stand and greet one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning. Would you join with me in the call to worship? Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. The steadfast love of, of the Lord endures forever. Give thanks and bless God's name. Our opening hymn this morning is Light of the World, page 2204 in your hymnals. pray. Oh God, you are eternal salvation and blessedness beyond what we can measure. Grant, we ask you, all your servants, that we who have received things holy and blessed from your bounty may be enabled to be holy and blessed forevermore. Oh God, the bread of life, be the guardian of our bodies, be the savior of our souls, Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated if the kids want to grab a bucket for change for change.
Would any other youngsters like to come down? Anybody could come down, right? Anybody's a youngster in God's house, right? Yeah, we all are. Well, I know I'm not Brandy, but Brandy wasn't feeling well today, so you're stuck with me. I have a question. Have you ever been to the zoo? Yeah. Well, did you get to see everything in one day, or were you kind of sad when it was time to leave? What? You would like to go back? Were you kind of sad when you left? Which, which is your favorite zoo, Rosemary? The Omaha Zoo. Could you see all of them, everything in one day, though? It's kind of hard to do that, isn't it? Well, what did you like to see at the zoo? A king cobra. Okay. They weren't, the fox weren't there. What did you like, Hatch? You liked it. Boy, you know what? You guys and Doug wouldn't get along very well. You know what? He doesn't like snakes. What, would, what did you like? A turtle. Riker, what did you like? Giraffes. Bo. What? I'm, uh, the red panda. What did you like at the zoo? Giraffe. What? What do you like? The tigers. The lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Right? <laughs> so... You know, it's, I'm asking you that because it's kind of like the day that all these people thought, you know what, Jesus gave us a really great meal yesterday. So in the story that we're going to hear today, they decided, hey, you know what, maybe I'll go back. Let's go back and see if Jesus will give us another meal. Now, Jesus was probably happy that they came back to see him, but he wanted them to not just want him to feed them, because if you get a meal, you only get it for a day, right? And then your stomach growls again, right? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? You know, you, it, but Jesus says to these folks, if you would have me come into your lives, invite me into your homes, invite me into everything you do, then I'm with you all the time. Well, you can go to the supermarket and get food, but what if Jesus is in your life? Is it better? Yeah, you're just not going to the supermarket. You can't go to the supermarket and buy Jesus off the shelf, right? No, you can't do that. You have to have Jesus. You have to ask him to be with you because doesn't Jesus want you to have the very best of everything? I mean, he wants us to have the good stuff. But can we learn about Jesus and one time at Sunday school or one time at church or one time at being nice to somebody. No, we have to do it all the time, don't we? We have to be like Jesus wants us to be. We need to be kind and we need to be thankful. And what's coming on Thursday? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Are we supposed to be thankful just that day? No. no. We should be thankful every day. What are you thankful for? You're thankful for yourself. That's good. That, we're thankful for you too, Philip. Your family. That's a great thing. You're thankful for what? Pickles? Yeah, pickles are good. I like them too. And what are you thankful for, Riker? Or I mean, Bo, I'm sorry. God. Macaroni. All right. Well, see, so you guys are thankful for food, but are you thankful for Jesus? I'm thankful for Jesus every day, and that's what Jesus wants us to do. Because when we're thankful for Jesus, then we can give others that joy and that kindness and that love, right? Okay, let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for loving us. I thank you for these young people. I thank you for their energy. I thank you for their love. And I thank you for the thankfulness they feel for their families and for, for food and, and for all that you give us. So continue to watch over them and bless them. And help us to be thankful every day so that we might share you with everyone in our lives. Amen.
Our gospel reading this morning is taken from the sixth chapter of the gospel according to John. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you were looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to him who has what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Here ends the reading of the word. May God bless its reading and our hearing it. If you're comfortably able to stand, please do so as we sing together number 628, Eat This Bread. So a big day coming up this Thursday, yes? Anybody started cooking yet? Bo started, what have you started cooking, Bo? Macaroni, yes? Yes, excellent. Anybody else start cooking yet? Will it keep, Riker, what have you started cooking? Hamburgers. Well, it's going to be a good Thanksgiving at the Berta household. What do you need? Hamburgers and macaroni. Those are two major parts of the food pyramid, I believe. Yes. But there's some things that go into preparation for Thanksgiving. Yes, you got to go grocery shopping. you got to set the table. you got to cook, right? Not as many things to get ready for Thanksgiving as there are to get ready for Christmas, right? Though that's why we start Christmas in August, because there's so many more things to get done. But when you think about Thanksgiving, what is the first thing that comes to mind with regard to what we do to celebrate Thanksgiving? Eat, yes, absolutely. And there are times I've heard, I've heard this, that sometimes people eat too much. Can you imagine such a thing? I often think, wouldn't it be nice if instead we had Chinese food so that an hour later we could be hungry again? (laughs) There was one Thanksgiving several years ago when I lived in Alliance, a good friend of ours by the name of Linda, she was also the church organist, she invited our family over for Thanksgiving, and she was a fantastic, still is a fantastic, fantastic cook. But Linda's one of the, and a very wonderful, gracious hostess, but she's like a helicopter hostess. You know what I mean? If she sees the smallest dent in your mashed potatoes, she is over to the stove, fill in the bowl, you need some more mashed potatoes. She never ever ate, I don't think, because she was always serving everybody else. But I ate so much that year. And I collapsed into her recliner, and I have never hurt so bad in all of my life. I tell you, a few years ago, I had that car accident with my son, broken wrist, cracked ribs. That was nothing compared to how much I hurt from eating too much at Linda's house for Thanksgiving. And you sometimes feel like, I'm never going to eat again. You ever felt that way? And you just think, oh, my goodness. And maybe it's three or four hours later, you think, yeah, there's still pie, you know. Or maybe it's the next day, maybe it's two or three days later, but eventually your stomach will start to growl again and things get back to normal. You know what I mean? Has your stomach ever growled so loud that other people have heard it? 
Has it ever happened at church? Yeah. I was at a funeral one time, and after the committal rites were over, there was military honors afterward, and I was standing there next to the funeral director. was not Mike. Don't worry. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. And his stomach growled so loud, I could hear, I could feel the earthquake beneath my feet. It was so stinking loud. And I meant to say something after, after everything got over, but I kind of forgot because, you know, I'm getting older and I don't remember things the way I used to. But I had to bite my lip. I mean, it was that loud. I was certain that everybody there could have heard this over the gunfire, I'm telling you. It was just, sometimes that happens. And that is how our body reminds us that it's time to eat, yes? Sometimes we get embarrassed by it, but we really shouldn't because it's just a natural thing. It happens. It's our body's way of saying, you know, it's time to eat something. But I wonder, what do our souls do to remind us that we need more spiritual food? Now hold that thought for just a few moments. You know, we think about Thanksgiving and it is a primarily uh, American holiday. I was watching a late night show the other night and one of the guests grew up in another country and the host asked, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? And he said, well, not the way we do here, but yeah, there's Thanksgiving you know, observations and celebrations in my home country. And it just reminded me that you know, Americans and even Christians don't have a corner on the market with regard to being thankful. That is a worldwide, uh, a worldwide attribute to which everybody tries to uh, adhere. I mean, yeah, some people are better about it than others. I mean, I completely get that, but it's, it's all over the place. It's not, it's not just us. The turkey, yeah. Black Friday, yeah, definitely. Macy's Thanksgiving Parade, absolutely. But being thankful in and of itself is... I think it's just ingrained within us as human beings. But as Christians, we're called to remember that more than just one day a year, but every single day of the year. Now, in the passage this morning, this is right after Jesus had fed the 5,000. You know the story with the loaves and the fishes, yes? 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 All right. So as Kim said, they came back. It's like, well, maybe he's got some more. Maybe he's got some leftovers. And we know there were leftovers because the scriptures tell us that everybody had their fill and there was still some leftover. And do you know why there was leftovers? Because fish is nasty. Just going to lay that out there. (laughs) Nobody wanted the fish. It's kind of like, you know, the jellied cranberry stuff, you know. It's just keep passing, just keep passing anyway. And yes, I know some of you like the jellied cranberry. I don't want to hear about it. God bless you. That's fine. But they get into this discussion with Jesus, as is often the case with the disciples or even others, this question and answer back and forth, trying to find out what Jesus is going to say about this, that, and the other. And sometimes it's kind of a spirited debate. But in this particular passage, Jesus is speaking just a little bit more metaphorically than usual. And sometimes there are folks who don't want to deal with metaphors. They only want black and white, concrete, yes or no answers, and that's all there is to it. They're not able to think in that abstract kind of way, but that's what Jesus is asking them to do in this way. He says, you know, you people, you're just here because you ate enough, but I've got a different kind of bread that will help you be sustained all through your life and even into the next life. But they they couldn't comprehend that because they wanted more pizza. You know what I mean? Where is the food, Jesus? And he says, no, no, no. There's something better. And this whole passage, if you think about it, is very, very similar to the conversation that Jesus had with the woman at the well. Remember, she came to draw water, and she came at a different time of day because she was an outcast. And then she's talking to Jesus. She shouldn't have been doing that. Jesus was talking to her. He shouldn't have been doing that. And finally, he says, I can give you water. That means you will never thirst again. And she understood, and then she went back to her village. And that's the same message that Jesus is trying to get across here to these folks. But some of them were so materially minded, they wanted something tangible that they would reject Jesus' claims. And so they bring up the manna in the wilderness. You all remember that story, yes? The Israelites were wandering out in the desert for 40 years, 
And they were hungry, and they were crabby, and they were whining, and they were complaining, much, much like our children do before supper. You know what I mean? You, I, I wasn't talking about you guys. Hey, no. My children whined and complained before supper. And so God provided manna. And that's what they remind Jesus. You know, we got this manna in the wilderness, but Jesus reminded them, well, one... It wasn't Moses that gave you the manna. It was God that gave you the manna. Moses was kind of like the waiter. You know, Moses explained it to you and, and brought it to you, but God is the one who actually provided it. But the more important thing is, if you recall, they were invited to collect as much manna as they could eat in that day, but if they collected extra, if they got greedy, you know, trying to put some away for later, what happened to it? It went bad, right? And Jesus is trying to convey here that the bread that he is offering is way better than manna because the bread of life is never going to go bad. It's not going to spoil. It's not going to rot. It's not going to mold. It's always going to be perfect and exactly what we need. As I was thinking about the manna, you know, you collect it in the morning and you eat it for the day, and then if there's extra, it goes bad and how Jesus is the bread of life, but that bread never, ever goes bad. I was reminded of the passage from Psalms that tells us, weeping tarries for the night, but joy comes for the morning. Manna lasts for a while, but Jesus gives us joy that lasts forever. We needn't worry about running out. We needn't worry about getting too full. We needn't worry about it going bad because it is always going to be perfect. As I think about that question that I asked about, what does our soul do to remind us that we need more spiritual food? You know, our stomachs growl to tell us that we need to eat, but what do our souls do to remind us that we need more of the bread of life? And that then leads me to these, the, a few quotes that I have from other traditions and other places in the world. The first says this, the unworthy man is ungrateful, forgetful of benefits. This ingratitude, this forgetfulness is congenial to mean people. But the worthy person is grateful and mindful of benefits done to him. This gratitude, this mindfulness is congenial to the best people. That is from the tradition of Buddhism. From Central America, we have this short prayer. Shepherd, I bless you for what you give me. If nothing you give me, I also do bless you. I follow you laughing. I follow you through roses and thorns, through brambles and thistles. I joyously follow. With you when there's plenty, with you when I want, still always with you. A good reminder for us to be thankful no matter what our circumstances. There will be good times. There will be bad times. There still will be times when, yes, our stomach will growl and we need a glass of water. God understands that. But God is still with us in the midst of that. And finally, it is God who has made for you the earth as a resting place and the sky as a canopy and has given you shape and made your shapes beautiful and has provided for your sustenance of things pure and good. Such is God, your Lord. So glory to God, the Lord of the worlds. Reminder that God has given us all that we have from the Quran. Three reminders that we are always, always to be thankful but as I think about what our souls might do to remind us that we need more of the bread of life, I go back to that passage from the Buddhist tradition. The unworthy man is ungrateful, forgetful of benefits. This ingratitude, this forgetfulness is congenial to mean people. Have you ever known somebody that was mean? Have you ever known somebody that was mean? They're not the most thankful people in the world, are they? They think that they deserve everything. And it reminds me that maybe the way our soul growls is when we start acting in a way that does not reflect the life of Christ. When we start being a little bit mean, when we start sniping at our neighbors, when we start criticizing, when we start judging, when we forget to be thankful. And so as we go forward this week, and we think about all of the things that we have to be thankful for, let us be mindful that while our stomachs may growl, it's easy to fill that need. 
but our souls growl from time to time. And it's even easier to fill that need because Jesus is always ready, always there, and willing to fill our souls. Let us sing together as we prepare ourselves to go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, your goodness surrounds us and your steadfast love endures forever. We enter your gates with thanksgiving and we come into your courts to sing our praise, blessing your glorious and holy name. You've made us your people and you care for us as your own flock. When our forebears wandered in the desert, you provided manna for their food. Each day of our lives, you provide for the needs of our bodies through the bounty of creation. Your gifts are not sparse. You open your hand, and we are fed in plenty. But we do not always live thankfully. We take for granted the food that we eat, the hands that grow it, and the land from which it comes. We waste much without regard to those among us who are hungry. In our greed, we destroy your creation and thereby dishonor you, the author and creator of the world. Forgive our sins, O God. Turn our hearts from selfishness. Restore us to obedience and rejoicing. Let your mercy lead us into proclaiming your worthiness throughout creation. Make us agents of your compassion to those who lack what they need. We know, God, that the pain of disease and infirmity drains the life out of persons we love. We know that the pain of loss weighs heavy upon the hearts of others that we know and love. This day, we lift up the family of Joanne Edgecombe, the Duba family, Jerry and Tina Lowenstein, Donna Best and family, Bob Grosser, the people of Ukraine, and those dealing with violence all over the world, but especially this day, those in Virginia and Idaho and Colorado. Grant your peace to all who suffer from affliction, that they may be raised up to offer their thanks for your goodness. Visit the dying and grant hope to all who mourn, that your steadfast love may be made manifest. Deliver us from anxiety and let us dwell in confidence as we make our requests known to you. Hear and answer us as you deem best for us. For we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. It is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
glory forever. Amen. God has given us so much. Let us now take the time to respond in gratitude with our lives, our gifts, and our offerings. together the prayer of dedication. O oh God, in response to all we have for, which comes from your hand of mercy, receive these gifts, which are the product of our lives, and let us not forget the better part of our offering, which is our devotion to the words of life we have received from Christ our Lord, in whose name we Please join together in our closing hymn, Life-Giving Bread, page 2261. We ask that you join us on each of the refrains that are on the screen, and we will have three verses between.
Go now into the world and may your bellies be full, but listen for the growling of your soul. Go in peace.